first presentation of the second day. We'll start right now with Mrs. Almudena Rodriguez Pardo. She is business agility consultant at Rodriguez Pardo and Associates. The subject of her presentation is scaled agile framework and ITSM, the beauty and the beast. Now, Mrs. Rodriguez Pardo, please start your presentation now. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Great. Yeah, welcome to my presentation. I'm very, very happy to be invited at this conference because you could think scale IL framework has nothing to do with ITMS and it really does. So we have closely relation. So I will start by the beginning like presenting our collaboration with Connect Business Academy. They are sponsors and you can visit them at the stands from the vendors and sponsoring. So we'll be happy to see you there after the presentation. Connect Business Academy is one of, is part of this conference too. And it's the company I work with in German speaking countries. And uh, that's me actually. Uh, I'm business agility consultant and trainer for a uh, wide variety of um, agile methodologies, um, but I come from the technology. I was 22 years working for Ericsson in Germany. I've been developer, so I've been very much involved in IT service management issues. Um, and I'm also international speakers. I take part in several conferences worldwide. Um, regarding agile methodologies and collaboration between different IL frameworks. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be speaking about framework, a scale IL framework. It's the most used and also the most conflicting. You have real passionate haters of a scale IL framework. Like I have this slide from LinkedIn. I didn't want to ruin anybody's career, so I protected the name. But you see what sort of, of comments and, and, and emotions are awaking when you speak about safe. I find it myself a bit funny because there's nothing more boring than a framework or a process. And to see all these emotions coming up, like saying safe is a cancer, it's a parasite, it's not healthy. I, I personally find sort of funny, so I always ask myself, do you know SAFE at all? Not before you get so emotional, but you see some streams in the industry. The other side of the coin is the fact that SAFE is the most applied framework worldwide when introducing organizational agility. Most of the big companies, when I say big, I say 100,000 employees, 50,000 employees. We are talking about companies like Airbus. They are introducing scalable framework. And any other framework, if you see this uh, survey run by the tool version one, uh, version one has been running now for 14 years, the state of agile report. This is very, very helpful for us consultants because then you see where the whole thing is going to. And we have seen safe increasing by 5% in one year, whereas any other framework are decreasing. So that's something about this. The scalable framework seems to be useful somehow. Now, why do we need this at all? Why did you get this far? We've been speaking about digitalization for such a long time and we need a digital transformation. Fair enough, we do. Once we have a digital transformation in place, our companies look like this. Everybody is digitalized, have the best technology. We even have a 5G antenna in the company. But we have the same working methodologies like the 20th century, and we might have the same management mindset than the 18th century. So a digital transformation is not enough. We need more. We need to the way we work, the working methodologies. We need to change the mindset which is driving this company. I like the way Forbes explained it in a beautiful article about organizational agility um, three years ago. Um, all sectors are disrupted by digital transformations. So how to handle this? It's achieve greater agility. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Forbes says, and I like this, it is an ability, it's not a religion, it's not a method, it's an ability to adjust the strategies, empower employees, respond to ambiguity with a speed and view unanticipated change. Sounds easy. That is the challenge we have. How do we put this in place? The first question which arises is what the heck is agility? There's so much confusion. I walk into companies where I have 20 different definitions, 19 probably wrong. So there are a lot of misunderstandings. What is agility? Agility is not user story points. Agility might be related to user stories or not. So we need some clarity. What is agility? 2001, 17 top software experts got together in Utah, USA for a weekend and they came out with four values and 12 principles. You can put them together in one page. It is really a piece of wisdom what these guys created. They made a real revolution in the way we have been doing software for the last 20 years. So it was a before and after from this 2001 when the Agile Manifesto was written. But if you read the Agile Manifesto, you sometimes have the feeling, um, okay, looks nice. How to ap apply this in my company? So we have created the core of Agile. What does it mean working Agile? You work Agile if you have delivery of value, not of a project, not of a product of value. You work Agile if you adapt to the customer. If you see the customer as often as possible, depends on your sector, but the real customer, not a proxy. You work Agile if you have teams, not only Scrum teams, any sort of teams. We need teamwork because of two reasons, velocity and complexity. And we need a culture of continuous improvement. If you have these four areas in place, you're working Agile, whatever you're doing. And if you don't have it in place, then we have some work to do. The very first approach we have been using in the software development was Scrum. Scrum was born five. Scrum did something great. First introduced interactions, we reduced the feedback cycle. But even more important for us in the IT, Scrum brought IT and business together. The Scrum teams are supposed to be end-to-end, cross-functional, having business analysts, developers, testers, and production. So we got the first, the first possibility to break the silos from business, IT, production. So we got, we started with Scrum collaboration. It's a very important aspect. Now, what Scrum did, we created some agility in the waterfall processes of our company. We agilized locally and not systemically. So Scrum was fantastic to get started, but any big company with like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 employees, at some point we had Scrum teams all over the place. We needed more. We needed more than just the Scrum. At some point we realized Scrum is not enough. We needed organizational agility, end to end. The complete company had to be agile. And here's where scalable framework comes in the picture. Here we have Dean Levingwell, the person who created SAFE. Dean has been doing an amazing work for the last 10 years. And he's the one who said that for the first, agility is not an option. But it's not just for something for teams, it's for the business. We need a lean enterprise. So we have to rethink now, we have to go to one step further. And here where we get the definition of SAFE. SAFE defines itself as a knowledge base of proven principles, practice and competencies all together integrated based on fundamentals of lean, agile and DevOps, which is actually true. We'll come back to this proven aspect and you can go to www.scaleilframework.com. Scale Isle Framework is open source, so you can click there all over the place and get as much information as you need on SAFE. I'll be happy to have you in my SAFE courses, but if you just want to know more information than this talk, please go here and click around 
the complete information is open source. And here's the safe graphic. For the first, you might get quite a shock. I must, uh, I, I accept agilists when they say, oh, Almudena looks so threatening, you know, it's so big, it's so complex, it's so hierarchical. Uh, the first impression of the SAFE framework is, is a bit heavy for traditional agilists. It's not as hierarchical as it might look like. It is a, a granularity, what we're seeing here, and not a hierarchy. And there are not that many more roles. If you consider, we want to run companies with 50,000 people with this framework. So if from that point of view, it's not that much. But I will not go in detail now uh, here. If you have any concrete questions to the roles, to the responsibilities, to the artifacts related in SAFE, uh, feel free to contact me. So it's not the point to go here and deep. It's to get closer to it's SAFE a beauty or SAFE a beast. Uh, I said proven. We've proved SAFE is working. Here you have some of the many companies. And when we say companies, we see companies like the Deutsche Bahn, the Yemen Railways, or the uh, French Employment Office, or the Dutch Tax Administration, or the Australian Post, the British Health System, Air France. So you have very, very big companies and also American governmental organizations, which are who have taken Scalable Framework to run their companies towards business agility. So if you go to Scalable Framework case studies, you see a big amount of companies listed in any sector, um, which proves that the Scalable Framework can work. Hmm? Now, these are some of the business results we get out of Scalable Framework. Um, it is truth. It's a bit dangerous to hope I buy safe and this is going to work. So it is a long way to get here. A transformation is a long way. Somebody was saying today in some of the talks I was listening, it's about people, it's about mindset. It's not just about setting a framework in place. It's about doing a lot of work, about changing the way we have been working and thinking at work. But by applying an agile transformation with support from safe, you can get to better quality for sure. So we very quickly realized in Ericsson 2011, when we started to work in large scale Scrum, that we had less defects in our products. So that is something we very quickly realized. You can be faster to market because we don't have everything or nothing like these old projects from the 90s. We are working incrementally. We can quickly deliver value to the customer. You can have productive teams if they are motivated. So if employees see what they are doing and the impact from their work, automatically, without any further movement, you increase the productivity or even the efficiency. So yes, we can get this far, but uh, here comes the warning. It's a long way and it's a lot of work. So now after I've presented SAFE and I've clarified what is agility and what's not agility? Comes the question, you know, do we have a beauty or a beast? Or is there any relation between the skill level framework and ITSM? Or if I take one, I have to take the other one out? Or is there any sort of, of, of a problem for them to be together? I don't think so. You do have companies where both models have been introduced. Now on the first, first time I did so you uh, safe, um, I'm going to go now a bit deeper there. Where is IT here? Because the word IT doesn't come up. Mm -hmm. This is an organizational framework that will be the first difference to IT service management. IT service management is part of the organization. And with safe, we want a holistic systemic view of the company. So IT service management is part of this. We had today at lunchtime presentation on DevOps where they say automation is king. Yes. SAFE speaks about continuous everything, continuous delivery, continuous integration, continuous deployment. So we have IT 
deep in our agile release trends. When we have value streams in place, and this is what an agile release train is, value stream, every system, information, software, hardware, and people related to this value stream work together. So IT is also on the train, it's on board. SAFE is based on Agile teams. When we say Agile teams, we say any team can be an IT service management team, can be a human resources team, can be a financial team. So the whole company is based on teamwork. We want no heroes. Why? Two reasons, velocity and the diversity you require for complexity. We have also in a scalar framework a very strong DevOps concept. So IT and automation is the A of this model. We have several aspects we have to consider and the C from the DevOps model from CAM is about culture. So we have a long way to go to bring IT business and all the parts related to a value stream together to collaborate. We have search services which can be human resources, can be financial, can be IT support, can be asset management. And we have a system team which might be supporting the teams to integrate big like products. You might have something like Airbus is running solution trains with SAFE to put together an airplane. So you might need a system team supporting you there. So as you can see, IT is scattered all over the place, which means it is important, it is the basic, the fundamentals. But what we're doing here is breaking the silos and collaborating and securing we are working not department oriented, IT oriented, but value oriented. Whatever is value for the customer, we do it together. So now the question is, shall I take SkillL framework, shall I take ITIL? Depends, really much depends on what you need. If you take a closer look to the safe definition I gave you and you see the ITIL4 definition where Agile and DevOps is very strongly uh, involved, they are not that far away from each other. So ITIL4 has gotten very, very close to what we are doing. Main difference, and that point is my opinion for God's sake, from my experience coaching companies, ITIL is more focused on the IT area and scale framework is seeking an organizational level. So you might have both frameworks in the same company and shouldn't be a problem. So as I say, ITIL4 is, has the same fundamentals as a scale framework. We have different granularities. So at least my experience and my opinion. So why are some of these implementations failing? Why is scale IL framework failing? Why is agility failing? Why is even ITIL failing? It's not the framework. It's not the principles behind. It's not the practices. The problem is something else, and I'm very happy my colleague um, Michael Kusters did beautiful graphical representation of what we faced in many of the companies we work with. What is the real problem we're trying to solve? What are the expectations from management? And what is a framework good for? Framework is a support, it's never a solution. So you have problems. Don't expect to solve them with a framework. First, get some clarity. What's the problem we have? Then get some transparency. And then make a decision. What's the framework which could support you? It could be a scalar framework, yes. But I've been at companies where I said before we run into an agile transformation with scalar framework, there are two or three other problems we have to solve. So no framework in the world is going to solve your problems. They are going to support you. You have every clarity what you have to do. At this point, most of the work as a consultant is about identifying the problem which are trying to solve. 
And I've been at companies where we started working on the portfolio area. So we don't start with teams. Others, we have to set up the scrum teams first and move from capacity allocation to scrum teams. Now, how many people do you have in the company? Oh, we have so much capacity. I said, I asked about people. How many people do you have here? Oh, we don't know. We count on capacity because you have some part-timers to say, okay, that's where we have to start working. What are your teams? A team. It's not just a bunch of people. Hmm? So like you see, you might have the problem we're trying to solve on different levels of the company and there are companies where start doing running scale aisle framework by the book, working on the teams and creating a team of teams. And other companies will say, okay, if we first have to short out the portfolio before we move in any other direction. Let's start from the upper part. Hmm? Um, whatever you're trying to do in your company before we introduce scale aisle framework, let's please clarify the expectations your uh, executives have and the problem we have. That's the experience as a consultant. Now, most of the problems we have by introducing agility are described here by Harvard Business Review beautifully. So Agile revolutionized the software industry definitely. And we have, have enormous changes in the last 30 years, if you consider 1995, Scrum began, and here Mary Popendick was already running lean software development in the 90s. We have a tremendous change in the last 30 years. Um, at this point, the greatest impediment is not wait for the next better methodologies. So say, okay, scale IR framework is not working, let's wait until something better comes out. You will wait very long. It is not about a better methodology. Uh, we have empirical evidence now that what we have at the mark can work. Hmm? Agile works also outside IT. We are running a lot of workshops for human resources now. We're involving them. We have in companies like Revit Digital in Cologne, the human resources people sitting with the scrum teams together to identify the roles, understand the needs of the teams. Hmm? So that we can do amazing work there. The problem is the behavior of executives, it's the mindset. We need to change the mindset. So we have to very closely work towards agile leadership. That is one of the fundamentals we have to work on. Now, whatever we do, we have to be quick because your competition is not sleeping. It doesn't mean everything we've done so far was wrong and now we're doing it right, for God's sake. Hmm? Um, we did great things last century. We sent a man to the moon with traditional waterfall project management. The code was written in paper and we made it to the moon and back. Hmm? So we have done great things last century with waterfall projects. The thing is what got us here is not gonna take us any farther. The world has changed. We need velocity and we need another approach to face the huge complexity out there. And waterfall projects are not running anymore because they not accept the complexity in the requirement specifications with 350 pages and they are not quick enough. Your, how quick should I be? Quicker than your competitor. So whatever you do from every, all the suggestions I gave you, give it a thought. We have to do something because we have to work in a complete different way than we have worked in the last years. This was actually my talk. I see I did a great job with timing and I open for any questions you might give. If you are listening to the recording or you don't have time now, you can reach me over my web page or you can reach me over my email. You can reach me also over LinkedIn and you can reach me over the company Connect in the stand they have in the, comp in the, in the conference. But for the first, of course, now I am very happy to answer any questions you may have. I say at this point, Muchas gracias por su atención. Maybe you were here in a slightly accent. I was born in Spain. And uh, I'll be happy to have any questions in German, English, Spanish, and Italian. Sorry for the French ones. I won't make that one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mrs. Uh, Rodriguez Pardo.